Masters in Parenting, a podcast from Chicago Parent Magazine. I'm your host, Hillary Bird. Hi, today we're talking with Sabina Sawillo. She's a certified financial planner and vice president at Morgan Stanley. Uh, she's a family wealth advisor that works with families to help them meet their financial goals. This is great as we're talking about holiday spending. Uh, the last two years, she was named to Forbes Magazine's list of top next generation advisors and to Working Mother's List of Top Wealth Advisors. She's also the mom of twin boys. Welcome, Sabina. Thank you. Thanks, Hillary, for having me. My pleasure. Oh, we're really excited to talk about holiday spending and uh, because everybody runs into this every year. Um, so why is it so important to create a holiday spending budget? Um, I think it just goes down the path of you have to be prepared. You have to be prepared for college spending, you have to be prepared for retirement, and it's non different for the holidays. Um, I think it, it once you have a plan, it mitigates the potential for impulse purchases and ultimately overspending. So um, you want to start by establishing, you want to start out with establishing the limit of how much do you want to actually spend. Um, in the first place. And then um, you could create different categories for gifts, for decorations, um, for entertainment, uh, and then and then actually stick to that budget. But, um, but setting that original limit is key and it will make a huge difference. And always, and I almost don't even want to call it a budget sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, people freeze up when they hear the word budget. So right. Let's call it a spending plan. Oh, um, and then if it's a spending plan, like always think of yourself as like the boss of that plan and be like, okay, I'm in charge of every dollar and I'll tell it where to go. Uh -huh. um, and I think it gives you a little bit of control, which is great. And then it's going to help you avoid those huge credit card bills that could potentially come in January. Uh, well, you have a plan for it, so you've already planned for it. Yeah, that's the yeah. thing, is that you start you start buying in November, you hit Black Friday, and then you don't really see what it means until late December or right. early January. Right, so there's something to be said also for starting early. Yeah. Because um, it would be nice if you could just kind of spread out that burden of those gifts um, and, and what they're going to end up um, balancing to if you actually started maybe sometime in the in the early fall and um, and we you know we hear about those overachievers <laughs> that have like everything bought and wrapped by Thanksgiving well <laughs> maybe that's a little too much but I mean there's something to be said for that too because I mean they're the ones probably enjoying those holiday parties Right. When we're out shopping and looking for a parking spot or spending a couple <laughs> of hours online looking for that gift. So 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 the but but I think that mostly it's just like spreading it out over a few months. Yeah. What are the easy ways to track? Once you've created a plan, mm -hmm. what are the easiest ways to track that plan to making sure you sort of stick with it? Yeah. So do it daily. Oh and yeah. And and this is not even just for holiday spending, but literally for um your life if if you can track these these purchases daily uh, and kind of make sure to say okay even if it's like a quick five ten minute and you don't have to have elaborate spreadsheets to do this you can do it with pen and paper on like in a, in a notebook it's it's fairly easy and there's like now also apps different apps to do it but it's gonna it's gonna give you an idea of are you trending over under or on par with 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 your plan and then you can make strategic moves if there's still time to do it um, and also it avoids um, I the potential of financial fraud because um, it's definitely on the rise oh, sure. and over the holidays um, we're gonna see more of it probably so if you have your log you can easily compare it and you can scan for discrepancies early on um, and I think and I think that that that's a that's a good habit to get into and it's just you know with your statements throughout the year but also with this with the spending um, I had an episode with that with a cab I took uh, this was a few months ago where um, the the gentleman the meter wasn't working so he and I kind of know what I should pay for the cab from, uh -huh. from the city to the to the suburbs um, and he said well let, let's just use the square and and you know I swiped my card again to the car and I mean it was around seventy five dollars um, which which did that that would have been the right what it's showing on my phone as seven fifty 
Whoa. $750. I'm like, nope, that's not right. But the cab drove away. I'm just like, well, uh, of course, I'm going to I'm gonna call my credit card company right away. But if I didn't have this tracking device of like my card actually sends me an alert of every single charge, I mean, I would have noticed it on the statement probably, but if it's a smaller charge, are you going to notice it on the statement? Right. So I think to just, you know, scanning it daily um, and definitely when you get the card, make sure you just kind of go through it in detail. Wow. Yeah, because mm-hmm. 75 instead of $7.50 yeah. doesn't al- may not alert a credit card company where $750 instead right. of 75 definitely right. alert No, I almost passed company. out as soon as I saw that. I was like... <laughs> Okay. All right. I'm calling them in the morning. It was too late to do it that night, but but it's just it, and and that's why I mean I have this alert. I use one card, and I think that it's also it helps when when you don't have ten different cards because if if you had to go to ten different statements every month, it it, it is very labor intensive, and uh, you probably need to budget out the time to do it. Versus if you have one card, it's a lot easier. So there's something to be said is that one of the things you try to avoid too that's you know during holiday shopping everybody wants you to buy a um or sign up for a department store credit card (laughs) (laughs) which is you know you feel like it's great at the time because you're gonna get five percent off or ten percent off that day and you think okay i've got stuff here for you know grandma grandpa aunts uncles and kids Sure, I'd love 30% off of this. Yeah, those but, large purchases, um, it's tempting. Right. Oh, it, it is absolutely tempting. And um, and I pretty much say that um, there is there is something to be said for the store cards because it's actually going to put cash in your pocket, which is great. But you, before making a commitment, you really want to make sure that you kind of step back and say, okay, well, put it in perspective. How many cards do you already have? Sure. Um, do you... Uh, do you carry debt? Um, are you going to pay this card off as soon as you get that statement, or is it just going to linger? Right. And if it is, well, well, that's a problem because usually with store cards, the interest rate is also higher. Uh huh. So um, if you're if you're making a large purchase, let's say it's the electronics store, and and you're you're you know you're you have the funds to pay it off, um, it might be worth the the you know the five minute. Um, uh, opening process which is which is you know a 10 15 percent but uh of savings but make sure to assess the situation first and kind of you know yourself best and you know your situation oh, sure. um and opening these cards could also affect your credit score um so it's just kind of a lot of uh, a lot to think about before you actually sign that agreement <laughs> oh sure because if you're thinking you know of buying a home in the new year or buying a car mm-hmm. in the new year or something like that opening three or four cards on black friday is really going to take a hit to your credit absolutely even if you pay them all off you know the day after right because your your available uh, limit is much larger and it depends if you have many cards already it could affect your score so like for example when when you are going through a mortgage process the the um, the mortgage processor will tell you do not do not open any cards or do not buy a car or do not do certain things sure. and and that's the reason why they tell you this because it's just it like it's going to have an impact and and sometimes like I said if your score is really high it's not going to it's not going to uh, make a major difference but it's it it sometimes it's just not worth it and it's something uh, extra to keep track of Oh yeah. And so are there apps you said that you recommended um you, you know to tracking it every day. What kind of apps um would you recommend keeping an eye out for to yeah. download to track that? I mean there's so many and obviously millennials now I mean they they I'm sure use like apps like Mint for example, but for me since I pretty much I rely on one card primarily mm-hmm. um and I actually have the alert from the card. So you can easily set it up with the card online and it will just tell you that it will give you a limit of, okay, if the charge is over $50, give me an alert every time. So if you swipe it, you literally get an alert that, oh, you just swiped $75 and and then you have a notification. And since we don't get charged for text messages now, sure. it, it doesn't matter. So it's just like if 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 you didn't have the package of, of you know, a, a, let's say 100 text messages, it could get quite expensive. You're swiping a lot. <laughs> right. But uh, but I think with with with, yeah, with, uh, you know, 
unlimited texts and voice now, I think it's a good idea to do it. And it will also just kind of keep you informed and um, and ultimately you go home, you can just kind of be like, oh, okay, I purchased this, this, this. It, it actually, uh, a, we're, we're still on budget and on track. So it's a matter to uh, paying attention to what your card offers, that your card, if your card offers those kinds of things or if your bank offers something like that, that can send you an alert to so that you can track your spending literally on a daily basis. Yeah, and I think it's a good idea. And and sometimes I even um, I'm at the at the checkout counter and they bear like they literally just swipe the card, uh, and I get an alert. So so the clerk <laughs> is like, what is she doing? And I'm just like, oh, I'm just, yeah. I, I barely look at the 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 register because I'm just like, oh yeah, and everything matches up. Oh, that's and, and good. you don't have to be as meticulous as this, but as long as you can do it once a day towards the end of the day, especially during the holiday season, yeah, it's it's essential. And um, and it will it, your January will thank you. Let's just put it that that's way. Good. <laughs> January, thanks, awesome. Um, is it better at, for your own tracking? Is it better to shop with cash only? Um, well, there are perks to using credit, certainly. Um, however, it, when we do use credit, it's um, it's conducive to going uh, spending a little more. Okay. And um, and as long as you know that you're going to be paying it off, well, that's that's fine. If you're paying it off and you actually want to keep everything tracked under that credit card statement, but if you know yourself, and if um, if the potential of impulsive purchases during the holidays could be an issue, or where you're at a store and they have, uh, and there's so many temptations during the, ho the holiday season, oh, sure. it's just everything's marked down or it seems that it's marked down and this gift said um, you just can't pass up if, if you know you have those tendencies. I would say have an envelope with cash and if you're let's say going um, on a specific uh, project of okay I'm buying gifts for four or five different people this is my budget if you have the cash with you uh, once it's gone it's gone right uh, and there's no way you're gonna be you're gonna be uh, overspending there because well you just won't have the money unless you did bring that card and you have it right. in your wallet, but that's a different story. So I think it's just kind of like a, you have to know yourself, and um, and there's something to be said for cash. So if you're if you have the tendency to go over budget, overspend, uh, and and have those urges to to you know um, give in to those deals, just bring cash with you. That makes it easier, I imagine, too, on your, you know, your overall financial plan that we're not calling a budget. That, you know, you you hit once you hit that limit, you know, if you do it on the first purchase, you know, <laughs> well, that's a problem, and then you automatically know. Well, I think uh, we might have an issue, so I don't even have to track myself because I open up that envelope, and we already are are short. We're so, yeah, we are done for the day. So. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. But, no. but yeah, it's it's and but the thing is, let's not forget, cards do have their reward points loyalty points and then you know they'll give us cash back so it's tempting but as long as we stay on track and say okay we're, we're paying this off and and I also say make sure when you're prepping for this holiday season um, pay down those credit cards uh -huh. uh, ahead of it or at least or pay them off if you can uh, because if we're just adding the you know the, the December shopping to our January uh, bill well that's just gonna accrue more interest over time sure plus how are we going to do with our new year's resolutions which are usually many of them are related to finance oh sure uh, you want to start on the right foot so like that new year um if you plan for it um you you definitely can and some people um actually open up a separate account uh and there's something to be said for that where you have a separate account just for this holiday season and you're saving in on a monthly basis you're adding to it um, which you know it takes a little bit of preparation uh, like anything financial um, but if you start early enough um, you're, you're, you're gonna be thankful later so and if you find yourself behind the eight ball at the end of you know this December hey next January maybe you open up a savings account and you know shove a little money in there every paycheck right. to be prepared for right. you know when next when the next one comes around yeah. and it, and if the bank offers the debit card from that account easy enough 
we have we don't have a credit card we use the debit card and and pretty much the you know uh, uh, diminish that account with with the needs that we have versus versus putting it on on a credit that's perfect and I remember uh, I remember my parents doing that with us when we were little with the Christmas savings accounts and yep. you see them um, you know the recommendation to open them in January and then again in November but you might not see them all the time um, but you know are, are the Christmas savings accounts a good idea for kids or how and at what age do you start teaching kids about how they should save and spend at the holidays um, for me I don't think there is a, there's is something to there's pretty much not not a time to say it's too early oh good um, so a and, 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 and I'm talking about just overall saving for for your child so like let's say a, there is gonna be there's gonna be the 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 time when they can do it on their own uh -huh. but as soon as they're born there should be something that is already set up for them if they can get, if they can uh, get a social security number which is a couple of days um, after they're born <laughs> right. uh, they should have like a 529 account or is or a custodian account um, whichever you prefer but uh, where you're starting to save for them because um, it's it like the 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 the, the compounding that you're gonna see over time is immense um, and one once they're three or four, they're gonna understand the value of money. So at that point, then you say, okay, well, um, you, maybe they're not getting an allowance yet, but I'm sure they're getting birthday gifts and Christmas gifts or you know other holiday gifts, and it would be a good time to say, okay, well, you, maybe you didn't get the toy you wanted, so we'll set aside X dollar amount and buy that toy, but the rest let's put it in the bank. And um, and I have twin boys, so we've I think started this concept very early on, and maybe there were, may I want to say maybe three or four, where our house just started exploding with toys <laughs> after and their their birthday is in November, oh. so it coincides with with like Christmas and um in then on Halloween they would. Get, it just, I was just like, wow, we, we, we do not have enough space to fit all of this. <laughs> right. So at that point, I was just like, okay, we're going to limit the toys. We are where, like, where the family finally caught on and they said, okay, well, um, e even if it's a little bit, uh, they'll get their own toy on their own. And then the rest, they actually were okay with putting it in, in the bank. So oh, nice. they had like a little, little piggy banks that they started with. And then we actually started a savings account for them. Uh, it's like a custodian and then a separate 529. So the 529, it's more for grandparents and parents to save. It. Right. <laughs> but the custodian accounts, I'll, I'll get occasional um, $20, mom. I, I, you know, now they're older, so they'll, they'll get different, uh, you know, spending funds or an allowance. And they'll actually give me a $10 uh, bill in an envelope and like, mom, put it in the bank. Oh, nice. Um, where where I think it's in, and so so I think it's just the need to sit down with them early and explain that um, it, it's going to grow in the bank. And, uh -huh. and keep it simple, because once you start talking about all oh, this power of compounding, um, it, the eighth wonder of the world, <laughs> of mindset, yeah, it, 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 it will just kind of glaze over and they'll be like, okay, I don't know what she's talking about. I'll never do this. Right. But if you kind of bring it to their level, and um, they, they had a little bit of it in school already, but if you bring it to their level and say, okay, well, I'm taking this $10, and it's going to grow to potentially, let's say, $11 in a year, or, or however long you want to say, um, then they'll understand that, okay, well, it's actually growing versus disappearing. Uh -huh. or or you know or it's it's actually better than the, the the toy that I really wanted but now it's somewhere in the corner right yeah right well and I imagine too like you said with twins you get a lot of toys and and they people feel obligated to do it double of course yeah because I don't want to have one to something <laughs> that you know maybe the other one isn't gonna get so he'll feel bad and of course you don't want that I like that idea of giving them something that they can play with and then giving into either a college account or you know money for them to to save for something my my goddaughter is uh, just starting high school and I finally asked her mom I said you know what can I get her for her birthday and she said seriously she's saving for a computer program she wants to learn how to um, how to do um, animation on a computer so I said okay 
fantastic that nice. is really easy you know mm-hmm. you do at some point feel bad sending a check to a 13 year old but you're like if this is her goal if this is really what she wants that's you know yeah, that's, put a that's little awesome. memo put right. a little memo on that check and or like or like a little picture of like okay this is my contribution to so and so right and 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 kids are are like they're so smart we sometimes talk to them like uh they're they're always two or three and they're not they understand um so as long as um as long as we ingrain in them and that that you you save and there is a reason to save um and we also have to lead by example uh-huh. uh because let's say if we're going to the store uh at christmas and we're just buying everything out there and then and then it just it not really being smart about it not following a plan just kind of like impulsive purchasing because maybe i'll give it to so and so no 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 show him that you actually have a list show him that okay i'm spending fifty dollars on so and so or during the holidays we will also have to look at we'll adopt a child or a couple kids and take them shopping with you because they will understand that okay well if we're spending a hundred dollars on on a child um it's not only toys that they want they also want a coat they might want shoes and it's going to be a lot more meaningful. They'll be like, okay, well, what do you mean this five-year-old didn't want toys only? Right. <laughs> and, then, and then it kind of brings it to their level. Like, oh, okay, they need other stuff too. So so I think it's just like taking them on, on your shopping experience is a good idea. I try to avoid taking both. Right. <laughs> because then they get into trouble sometimes. Right. But, uh, but yeah, one at a time, I think it, it's it, it's a good idea. And then, and then slowly... Uh, you just develop good habits. How important is teaching that idea of charity to kids when they're young and, you know, whether it's adopting a Christmas tree child or, you know, or saving and, you know, giving wherever, you know, you choose to, to, to give to charity. How important is that, especially at the holidays? Very, very. So as we know, December is, is the month of, of the season of giving. So, um, prepare them for it early on and immerse your child in in the charitable giving process um explain that like let's say if you're giving money to several different charities or you want to give to one present several to them and explain the mission to them and then have them actually say okay well you know let's let's give some money to this one and that one and actually make a donation in their name Oh, I think that's going to be so meaningful and and they're going to be part of it from the beginning. Um but also like when you're when you're giving assets or um or uh goods to a food pantry. Uh-huh. Take them take them with you and um it, and and show them or even help have if they're old enough have have them help with a soup kitchen. I think it's just so meaningful and and then they're going to appreciate what they have so much more and they'll understand that we need to share. Uh-huh. So I think it's a good foundation. Is there, um, you know, something to like you said, kids? You think of kids mostly, you know, at the at the holidays. The um, I, I appreciate the idea of this time of year really giving them an opportunity to learn about finances. I feel like that's that's sort of the perfect time to get them started. Um, you know, like you said, there's no age that's too young, um, right. and uh, to to get kids. To get kids started is there is there a really good time of year to to start talking to them about Christmas shopping is it January is it November is it <laughs> I want to say start early because um and 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 sometimes I mean I, I almost take it back to like okay well you don't you you want to be prepared so it kind of goes with this organization and preparation um and and that's for anything financial but for and you, you can definitely do it with with holiday shopping and then you're gonna you're you can just say that okay well uh supplies will run low uh-huh. come come december so that's why we want to start early we want to make a list early we we want to prep early um and then and then save for it so let's say if they're at an age where they're maybe contributing to the gifts um well, it would be very difficult if we're if we're spending money throughout the year, and then hoping that we're gonna have enough come December to buy a gift for grandma, gift for grandpa, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Sure. Um, and 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 even like in my boys' school, they'll they'll have um, they'll 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 have different um, eh, like it's like I think they they call it 
not a, like a holiday shop, but but I mean it's just basically like different gifts. Oh and, yeah, and and there may be a dollar or two, but unless the kids save for it, they're not gonna have enough. So I think telling them as early as end of summer uh-huh. and I think it kind of just with coincides with you know being starting school and um, and just kind of getting um, through like the 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 summer and I'm sure like summer might be too early because there's going to be other things like for example the uh, concession stand at the pool right. that they're spending money on but uh, starting in the fall with school beginning I think it's it's a good way to say okay well there are certain things we want to prep for and one of them is holiday shopping sure and 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 you know maybe don't put all of your allowance away but save a little bit the I I remember too being when I was a newlywed you suddenly gain all of these relatives on your shopping list <laughs> you know you weren't you weren't previously buying for in-laws <laughs> that you are now you know now that you've merged your shopping yes. lists mm-hmm. um but what are some you know some best practices when either you know like like you've said you had twins and now mm-hmm. that two more people on somebody's shopping list for to buy for what are some good ideas you know when you've either just got married or just merged families or you know your sister has had you know two kids triplets oh. right <laughs> triplets you know to 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 sort of um cut down on some of those costs um i think just just sitting down and and obviously you're emerging families so just sitting down and having a conversation is key and have it early because because you 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 will have those overachievers that are done with shopping by right. Thanksgiving. so you don't want to wait till thanksgiving to have this conversation but have it early and and i see success with a lot of families just doing the secret santa oh, or yeah. doing like a family grab bag where literally you're buying um a gift for one another person versus buying 20 gifts yeah um and then also there are so many amazing um low cost community programmings that are happening across chicagoland like for example chicago parent magazine is amazing <laughs> with like getting giving us great coverage of all those festivities that go on oh well thank you <laughs> yeah, yeah no 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 like i i definitely get those emails and i pay attention um so and then but also keep in mind that with like for example with older children or with adults um Sometimes giving a gift is not as meaningful as spending time together. Uh-huh. So instead of you know trying like being overwhelmed with shopping for everyone, have a conversation. Maybe we're gonna go to a really nice dinner where everyone pays for themselves, or go to a concert, or go to theater and actually spend time together. Oh, that's a really good idea. So. Those are some great. Well, Sabina, thank you so so much for your time today. Um, it has been incredibly enlightening, and I hope I started saving early enough. <laughs> oh no, it's my pleasure and happy holidays.